Okay, so the Bletchley Declaration, which was published before the summit, uses relatively vague language uh, about when it refers to the responsibilities of both developing uh, AI companies and uh, nation states. While this is a good starting point, um, what can we expect from the government when it comes to specific legislation to regulate our AI in the UK? First of all, we shouldn't underestimate what we've managed to achieve here. We brought together, I think the last count was about 28 countries from all corners of the globe. Every continent was represented at this summit for the very first ever summit on AI safety. Uh, that included countries like America and China and the EU. Um, so it is monumental in terms of bringing those countries together. But we didn't stop at countries. We also brought in the developers, the people that are actually making this technology themselves. And we also brought in the experts, so the scientists, the academics, from again across the globe, for the people that have been thinking about this for a very long time. So people with diverse range of opinions, people that... Uh, a lot of people said that would never find any common ground or agreement. And we managed to achieve that in the Bletchley Declaration. And it's not just a one-off. We've also set up a long-term process. South Korea have agreed to host the second one in literally just six months. France have agreed to host the next one after that. That's a monumental achievement because we've set up a long-term process to examine AI safety and put in place processes that align. We've also set up what is akin to the structure of the IPCC with a panel, in effect, that will produce a state of science report that will hoover up all of the research and, uh, and really produce where are we with the risk because there's so much uncertainty and so much confusion and also so much lack of understanding around the risk because this technology is emerging quicker than any technology we've ever seen. Now, when it comes to legislation, I think the important thing to remember is the legislation in this country, for one thing, would take about a year to produce. But actually, we haven't got a year. We know that those models are coming out uh, next year, so less than a year. That means we need action now. What we've managed to secure is an agreement for access to the models from the developers so that then we can evaluate them. And as the Prime Minister announced today, we will evaluate them before they're deployed to make sure that they are safe. And that's a third-party set of eyes uh, commissioned by the government, and we're using experts to be able to do that, to give the British public the confidence to know that this is going to be rolled out in a safe way. Yeah, so just staying on that topic, mm. then obviously talking about international cooperation, you know, AI is a global technology, yeah. and for the safety of all to be guaranteed, we need, you know, nations to be in agreement. So has there been a commitment from the UK, US, China, and other nations uh, to begin negotiations on a binding treaty for international regulation? So that was never what we were trying to achieve. We were very upfront in the objectives mm. of the summit. This wasn't to create a global regulator or a set of global regulations. This was about starting the conversation. You know, a lot, some of the countries that came were um, not as developed in their thinking on this topic. Others were really developed and done a great deal of work. And what we needed to do was get everybody around the table and discuss it and start that process off. And we've managed to do that. I was on a stage yesterday with China, the, with the EU, with, with myself obviously representing the UK. You know, that is monumental to have those, uh, that representation and a level of agreement on such an important topic. So, again, just sticking on this topic of, of, you know, the international element, Joe Biden this week discussed the potential uh, for new rules that make it mandatory for AI content to be branded with a watermark so that people know that it's fake. Um, do you think that this is something that the UK could look into in some time in the future? So what we've been trying to do is work with our global partners, including America, and I think the proof was in the pudding in the fact that we announced a safety institute and they announced a safety institute and we've said that they're going to work together in lockstep, and that's not my words, that's the words of their Secretary of Commerce, Gina Raimondo, because it's so important that we don't just tackle this in silos, we actually work together, which is very much the spirit of the summit. So we were delighted that they, uh, they, they went the extra mile this week. And we're delighted that they're going to, uh, in effect, a lot of their policies that they've announced this week are going to add more transparency. And that's at the heart of what we did last week. For the first time ever, we got these companies to actually publish their safety processes. Now, that in itself was, was a big deal. And America have added and complemented to that this week. Now, when it comes to watermarking, there is a debate in the industry itself over whether it will be um, uh, bulletproof or whether, you know, whether it can be jailbreak, to use the, the correct term. 
Um, and if you speak to some of the developers, like, like Demis from DeepMind, he will tell you that he's a you know, big advocate of watermarking. He's told me that they're doing work on it. If you speak to, to other people in the sector, they will question whether it will be reliable enough. But it is important to remember that AI, whilst it presents some of the problems, could potentially present some of the solutions, as you've just outlined. So while there are a number of key figures attending the summit, such as Elon Musk and Kamala Harris, the media has been keen to point out that some notable figures have been absent. So, you know, people like Joe Biden, the French president, uh, the German chancellor. Um, are you disappointed by this? And do you think that their absence will weaken any of the agreements made this week? I think that the vice president of America came. That is uh, massive by anybody's imagination. You know, the president of the European Commission came. You know, there was a, a, a top calibre of individuals. And um, as we saw there was a representation from every single continent in the world. But this was not a summit about personalities. This was a summit about action and about the fact that we as a nation managed to um, produce the first ever summit on AI safety. We managed to convene not only that country representation, but the companies. And we also managed to convene world leading experts and then produce a long term process. And I think Oh, something that strikes me and speaks volumes to how successful it's been is the fact that I've, I've literally been going down the corridor uh, today and every five minutes some, somebody taps me on the shoulder and they want to, to host the, the summit after France. So that, that shows how invested everybody is and how they recognise that actually this is a process where we are going to grip those risks. We are going to be able to put up those guardrails so that we can seize the opportunities. And we did speak at length at this summit about the amazing opportunities and how AI can transform and is already beginning to transform our NHS, how it can lead to, to, to cleaner, greener use of, um, of transport, how it can enable us to tackle climate change and help developing nations. In fact, I did a, a session this afternoon with the Foreign Secretary talking to uh, countries in, in, around the world, including those from Africa that were talking about how they saw the prospects of benefiting from AI and what we need to do. So uh, just talking a bit more domestically now, so uh, next year is obviously a general election year. How worried are you about the impact of disinformation from AI in this? I think we need to be alive to, to the risk, definitely, um, especially as, as deep fakes are so realistic now already. Um, and it would be foolish to, uh, to not put in place some protocols and, and think about what we could do in this area. In fact, it's something that we've talked about at this summit, not just in the context of elections, but in relation to dis and misinformation in general. And the fact that if you have too much of that, then obviously the public will just tune off all information, which in itself can be dangerous too. And we're not the only nation that's facing elections next year. And that's some, certainly something that I've spoken about with my counterparts, and we've agreed to continue that conversation and work together to share expertise. And it's something that I'm also working on with the security minister here in the UK, who chairs a task force dedicated to this topic entitled Defending Democracy. Okay, that's brilliant. Thank you. Thank you.